you gotta understand, I started off as a huge AK fan. I really did. I entered the gun community as I like AK-47s. I've got quite a few requests to bring this bad boy out again. Do a video dedicated just for it. So what exactly are we looking at here? This is a Romy G. They are easily identifiable because they will have a black mark on the stock right here. And then they will have a G right there on the trunnion. I like this AK better than most. I quickly realized their shortcomings. Now for me, they're more of a historical piece. Yes, they could double up as a combat rifle. Are they the best tool for the job? No. They have severe limitations. Now because AK-47s are imported, you know, the good ones, there's only so much you can do as far as accuracy comes. And most of them are machine guns in other countries. So therefore, even if you do it 100% clone correct, well, it's not because obviously it's not a machine gun. Well, the Romy G is a little bit different. See, these start off as a military rifle, and then they convert them to semi-automatic for the Romanian Guard. So the only difference, aside from the fact that it doesn't have the original receiver, is there would be a third pin right there. Now, when they give it to the Romanian Guard, that is a civilian guard, so they convert them all to semi-automatic for whatever reason I will never know. Anyway, they would just have, I believe, a rivet pounded in the third pin so they couldn't put an auto sear in there. And then they just removed the machine gun parts. But the point is, they are semi-auto. The Romy G lives its life as a semi-auto AK-47 or AKM, whatever you prefer to use. Therefore, it can be more accurate if you go with this style of clone because that's what they are. They're semi-auto. So what's the deal with this rifle? We are looking at a cold hammer forge barrel that is chrome lined. It is threaded. It's got the Kami reverse thread. Obviously your AK sights. This particular one does not have an optics mount on there, which is fine because when I'm talking about a piece of history, I'm looking for like the purest form of thing. I want to vomit every time I see an AK out there with like a red dot or a scope or a tactical flashlight or something like that on there. Because that's not what these are for. I would never look at this and be like, this is a decent combat rifle. Nice boogaloo rifle. Great for home defense. No, I'm looking at this as this is an original piece I want hanging on the wall next to like the M1 Grand, the Mini 14, something like that, 1903 Springfield. I want it to look as original as possible. If I want a scope or a red dot or a flashlight, I'm going to buy an AR. That's not what this is for. This is to look pretty. Yes, I could be in a situation where I'm like, shit, I'm out of ammo for everything. Like, damn it, grab the AK, and I could use it effectively. Now, when I tested the accuracy on this, so this is the grouping results. The very ver worst one was 7.26 MOA. Now, when I shot the groups, I went this way with them. So this was the very first group I did, 7.26. Not very promising. Now, the best group I did was right here it's 0.66 inches giving me 2.54 moa so what can we learn from all of this this one got an extra shot so this is actually a four shot group if you count it as a three shot group and you just take the best three it's 3.55 if you take all four it's 6.74 so with that four shot group included all of them added up averaged out this rifle is five point 5.30 MOA. Now, if you were to count this as a three shot group and just take the best three, it would come to 4.84 MOA. Which would make this, what, like a 200 yard rifle? Because three, that'd be six. Yeah, this would make this effective at like 200 yards, which is fine. Oh, this does have the dawn grip. These things suck. They really do. If this rifle didn't originally have this grip, it would not go on there. Because the problem is, if you're running a 30-round mag, the gap between the mag and the grip is like this. So you can just barely rock it, and it makes mag changes very difficult. But, that's what it came with, so... 
whatever. It does have my proper length of pull, 12 and a quarter. So if you're really tall, this isn't gonna fit you for crap, but us normal sized people, good to go. Trigger. Lots of creep. But the brake is all right. I mean, I could, I could, I could work this. This trigger does have some slap though. Uh, shooting a couple of rounds are just fine, but if you want to like rapid fire a 30 round mag, or you're going to be shooting it all day, you're going to have to put on a glove or something, because it really starts wearing down on you. So what else do we got here? Chambered in 76 2 by 39 As you'll notice, it does have three positions on the selector. This was made that way because that's how it would originally be. Because the Romy G, they were full auto at one time that got converted to semi-auto for the Romanian Guard. And it does have the proper writing that it should have on there. Um, this one is not modified. And you're going to want to check that with your rifles. Because otherwise, if you get a little crazy with the safety and you jump the top cover. Let me demonstrate. So, I'm at the range. I'm just getting done shooting. I sling it up. I go to throw it on safety. And I go too far with this. Boom! It drops the hammer and discharges. So, you're always going to want to... Check that on your AKs and be aware of it. Typically, this little bump right here on the dust cover will stop that from happening, but, you know, get a little excited and you'll rip it on safety. Boom! Discharges. Obviously, you know, always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction, but it's still going to make you poop your pants a little bit should that happen. Come to daddy. Oh, come on. Man, I always struggle with those. And the AK sounds cool as hell when you shoot. Uh, the lines on this are pretty nice. Rivets were done beautifully. I like this gun. Again, like I said, I like it as a showpiece, a collectible. I do not look at that and be like, that is a good go-to-war rifle. Just my opinion. I mean, the cartridge, it's obsolete. It's underpowered. The mechanics of this, obsolete. Terribly positioned, how the mag goes in, how the safety selector rocks, it just... This is not my ideal rifle, but it does look cool as hell. If you're thinking about getting an AK, this is one I would recommend. Find an old Romy G kit, do your build on that, because you can make it a, a lot closer to clone correct than you could with any other AK. Oh, it does also have a place where you can put your chapstick in case your lips get a little chafed, you know, in the end of the world or whatever. Sights, I still don't understand these fully. So, we got the P, and that's just where I always keep it. But I don't know if these are MOA come-ups. I know they're supposed to be yardage, but the cartridge can never move, can never travel a thousand yards. It's just not going to happen. Even at 300, things get a little dicey. At 500, it's next to impossible to hit shit. But I don't know if each click is like a set amount of MOA, I even messaged Rob Ski way back when, you know, AK Operator Union, to try to ask uh, what these are calibrated for, because it'd be nice to know the actual come up of it. No one knows. So I don't know if it's like supposed to be one MOA per click, 15 MOA per click, or exactly how it goes. Uh, if you actually know the answer to that, let me know. Uh, AKs are a full length piston. So basically the piston connects on the bolt carrier, it goes up this tube and it comes all the way to here, and it moves with the whole gun. That has its disadvantages and its advantages. One of the advantages, these can fire underwater without exploding. You try to throw a AR-15 underwater, you're probably going to blow it up because it turns all that air pressure into hydraulic pressure and accelerates your bolt carrier so fast it smashes the gun. Doesn't happen with an AK. So theoretically you could like have this underwater and like, hey, you know, enemy combatants, I'm just swimming. And then pull it up and bam! You can't do that with an AR. The downside is, because there's so much mass and it's above the center line of the barrel, AKs recoil like this. Plus, there's a whole lot of mass, so you get your recoil impulse from the projectile leaving the barrel. Then when the bolt comes back, it comes to a sudden stop, and then you get a second impulse. But that's just the nature of the beast with AKs. I mean, you just deal with it. It would be tough to shoot it on full auto, or I think it would anyway. Not saying I know from experience, but I, it's not that bad. 
I mean, it's just something you deal with. And so the 6 2 by 39 yes, it's not that great at range. Yes, it's an obsolete cartridge. But inside of like 50 yards, it's devastating. Plus, they're great at smashing hard objects like bricks and stuff like that. So, what do I think of this rifle? Well, I still got it. So clearly, I like it. Should you buy one? Oh, yeah, most definitely. If you're going to buy an AK, that's one I would try for. They're cool. They have historical value, and you can build them a lot closer to Clone Correct than you can a lot of other AKs. Anyway, hope you liked my AK video. Thank you for watching. Like the support channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on that, and then doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, it'll kick back for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.